Are you guys ready for a heavy load of information? Well, I've got one for you. It's a speech about cranes and the history of cranes. We're going to be talking about two basic type of cranes. You have your standard crawler crane, like that, and your rough terrain crane, like this. Your crawler cranes are going to have a lot more capacity, and they generally will reach much higher. While your rough terrain are better for getting around on job sites, because they're four wheel drive, and they can just, and they have more ground clearance. Yeah, okay. I'll start off by talking about a little bit of history on cranes. Okay. Manitowoc didn't start out as a, as a crane business. It started out as a shipbuilding company, and then after that started going south in World War One, um, was look the Manitowoc Ship and Company was looking to diversify their business. Manitowoc Cranes began as a business venture by Charles West and Elias Gunnell. After observing the Moore Speed Crane manufactured in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Charles West thought cranes were a way to expand the business and use shipyards and machine shops in 1925. The Moore Speed Crane Company was in debt and Charles West was willing to help them build cranes to help provide cash for the struggling company. All, all patents were signed over to Manitowoc as a liability, however, they would not sell any machines under the Manitowoc name. The speed crane in 1925 was a steam-driven 15-ton capacity crane that sat on four wheels. Ten models were built by Manitowoc from the basic model. Eventually, after listening to customer feedback, Moore redesigned the crane and installed a gasoline engine. Another major change was the replacement of the wheels with the crawler base that allowed for better traction. The first model was redesigned speed crane was named a Model 100. Okay. Over here. This one. Let's see here. One of the biggest one of the biggest improvements to cranes was created by a guy named Messrs. R. Waygood. He was he was the inventor of the hydraulic lift, which completely revolutionized the crane business. They they had used gearing and pulleys before, which they still utilize, utilize today. But with the use of hydraulics, they could lift much bigger loads and have greater capacities. here I will be talking about this is an RT 9130 I'll be talking about some of the designs of it it's got a five section full power boom including it's got four sections it'll have four sections in inside of the main boom the main boom counts as sections to make five it's got a 130 U.S. ton capacity. It's got a removable counterweight that will drop down and for shipping because it's just far too heavy. And the outrigger boxes come up, come off for shipping because it's just too heavy whenever it's all put together. It's got a tip height of 238 feet and a lifting capacity of 130 tons. It has a mega form boom on it, which is a U-shaped boom in the bottom, instead of being um, trapezoidal, which is what they've done in the past, because that takes out a lot of the stiffeners and extra metal they have to put in there, because extra metal equals more weight, which is less capacity. So it makes the crane be able to lift more, and it's lighter. So it's all around a very good design. The cranes are four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering, and you can independently control the rear steer. They're very neat. The cabs on them, because often operators, you I mean your booms are going to be up, 
the cabs on them and tilt back and you can that way you can run them without having to strain your neck all the time all in all cranes that's what I'm going to school for I like them and I'm just glad I could share a little bit of information with you guys thanks